Hey guys, it's Cody with Double C Custom Leather. Uh, today we're going to be doing a short video showing you guys how to wet mold a leather holster. Um, the holster we're going to be doing today is a pancake outside the waistband style holster for a 1911 full size. Um, this is the same holster we did our saddle stitch video on, so if you guys want to check that out, I'll put the link somewhere right in this area. If I can figure out how to do that. I haven't quite figured it out yet, guys, to be honest. So, anyhow, back to the holster. Um, if you'll see, there's no contours here like you would see on most of my holsters. It's because we haven't wet molded it yet. Um, if you were to take this gun out, you don't know what kind of gun it is. The only reason you know it's 1911 is because I had it sitting in there and I told you guys. But, once we get done, you'll be able to look at the holster and you'll be able to see the shape and the style and know right off the bat that this is a 1911 holster. Okay, and that's what makes the holsters aesthetically pleasing, for one. For two, it gives them a lot more retention. Um, my holsters run pretty tight because I run tight stitch lines before wet molding. As you can see, the gun's not falling out especially on this holster because we have a tension screw. I'll do another video detailing how to do that and why we use tension screws. Um, I do them maybe on 33% of my holsters. I really don't do them that much. Um, but the 1911s, the big heavy metal guns, they help. They help a whole lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the tripod turned around. We'll show you guys kind of how I go about doing it. I, I do a little bit different than most people because um, I actually use a press. Um, I can do a separate video showing you guys how to make that press. Uh, it's real simple. Um, you can find a lot of different press ideas on YouTube as well. If you just look under Kydex forums, um, a lot of times those guys are the guys that they use the press. And let's talk about Kydex for a second. Um, us wet molding this holster is making it more like a Kydex, but we, we still have all the benefits of leather. We still have the smell of leather. We still have the the beautifulness of leather, um, the, the nostalgia, okay? Um, Kydex doesn't have that. All they have going for them is the fact that the, it's really tight fit, it, you can pull it out easily and all that good stuff, but it mars the gun up. Um, you know, that's why I do what I do. I like leather holsters, I like the nostalgia of it. Um, but we can take something from the Kydex guys and, and, and learn about these presses and how we use them. Um, and I'll show you guys when we put the holster in the press, uh, how it comes out. And it does help out a lot with the molding process. And then we'll go over the fine detail molding. Um, some people call it boning. Um, and that comes from a term back in the day when they actually used to use pieces of bone because they were slick. And they used to slick the outside of the leather with the bone and get the, get the, get the lines and the shape that they wanted. Um, I'm not gonna be using a bone. Um, I have used deer antler before and it works pretty well. Um, I've just found that some other tools work a little better for me, so we're going to be using those. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll get the tripod turned around, and we'll get we'll get balls deep in this thing. All right, guys. All right, guys, we're ready to get started on this. Um, what I got here is just a pot. You can use anything that's big enough to fit your holster in. Um, I use pots a lot. Um, they tend to work for me pretty good. Um, I got some kind of lukewarm soapy water um, you don't want it to be like scalding hot but you don't want it to be cold either um, that helps break down the fibers in the leather which is really going to help you with this process because what you're doing is actually stretching the leather around the gun okay let's go ahead and talk about the gun uh you guys if you're using a real gun to do this um you can saran wrap the gun to keep it from getting wet um i'm using a blue gun that's the benefit of having blue guns one they're not real guns you don't have to get them wet Two, they're completely and totally safe. So you guys make sure you safety check the gun. Make sure you make sure there's not a bullet in the chamber. There's a lot of times when you're doing this, you're gonna be pointing the, you're gonna be pointing the pistol at yourself, and you're gonna be digging into the trigger guard. That is a good way to get shot if you're not using a blue gun. Okay, um, so please make sure you safety check the gun before doing this. Um, <clears throat> once again, lukewarm water, um, and we're gonna be stretching this around. Our pistol I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more in detail right now we're just gonna go ahead and drop this in and let this get soaking okay um, I don't really time it there's guys who do um, I find it easier just to kind of go until I get the texture that I want the softness that I want to where I know I can stretch the leather around the gun and I know I can get some good detail in my molding but you don't want it too too soft and wet okay um, if you've ever molded clay it's kind of the same thing um, you don't want to get too too much moisture in there to where you're 
you're just you're you're fighting a losing battle and each time you try to mold the line will actually get kind of muddy and blurred um, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about once we get this out and uh, and get it get it started um, so since we have nothing to talk about while this is molding we'll talk about this beer this is Andy Gator it's awesome um, 8 per 8.0 by volume uh, it's brewed somewhere in Louisiana, I believe. Yeah, Alberta Springs. Um, man, this is an awesome beer, guys. It's a Hell's Bach. Um, Hell's Doppelbach, I'm sorry. I'm just getting into this craft brew stuff, and um, I really like this one. I bought a lot of it when it was on sale. I've been drinking the crap out of it. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a check. So what I do is I take it out, and I kind of just bend it back and forth and kind of see if I'm at the... The moisture content that I want um, you can stick this in a plastic bag and let it case if you've ever seen that casing um, technique uh, totally fine to do that um, one thing we will talk about though let me check this one last time because it was getting to where I wanted it just wasn't quite let it sit for a couple more seconds so one thing I do want to talk about is the fact that once we all right, guys, that's about right. That's about right where I want it. Um, it's pretty saturated, um, but it's not too saturated, okay? So I'm going to let this drip dry for a second. I'm going to talk about something. Um, you'll see a lot of guys online that dye their holsters after they wet mold, okay? Um, the reason for that is the dye actually keeps the water from, from absorbing. Um, and... I use only Fibings Pro dye, so I can't I can't attest to anything else, guys. Um, my dye never runs off during my molding process, but the Pro dye is the, is the cat's ass in my in my book. When I used to use water dyes and stuff, I did have some runoff sometimes when I was wet molding. Um, the reason I dye before I wet mold is because I do a lot of contrast stitching, as you can see. It's white against brown, okay. And what that does is if I was to stitch this white, wet mold it, and then dye it, whatever color I dyed it is what color my thread would end up. So um, that's one thing I did want to mention. Now, if you're using black thread, you can definitely wet mold before you dye. Okay, I find it a lot easier to get an even coat of dye as well before. Um, I've done it both ways, guys. This is the way that I like doing it. So. Let me get rid of this pot of water. I'll be right back. We'll show you the rest of the steps. All right, guys, ready to get started here. Um, I apologize ahead of time if I get this thing out of frame at all because um, my camera's facing away and I cannot see it. So um, I also got a light up. Um, Y'all let me know if that helps. Uh, I know some of my videos before were kind of kind of hard to see what I was doing. So I'm trying to work on that, guys. I'm trying to get some better equipment. So y'all bear with me for the time being. Uh, this is what we're going to have to have to do here get a swig of my indicator there all right guys so I'm gonna just take this this holster and I'm gonna put the gun in it real quick remember guys if y'all are like building along falling along safety check that thing please all right so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this wooden dowel and I'm gonna shove it in right here down the sight channel what we're gonna use that for is actually molding a sight channel in and sometimes you do have to kind of they kind of tight. You got to tap it in. Um, I just use that little plastic mallet. Look down the barrel. All right, cool. We're down to our bottom sight there. So this this sight channel is you're gonna mold in is a huge huge thing all right when you're dragging the gun out of the holster you don't want to catch any leather on the site one it's going to hang up two if you catch a little bit of leather and it it clogs up that site and you go to look down the sights you're going to see nothing but leather and, and that's not cool um so we're going to mold a sight channel in there sure that doesn't happen um while we're doing that actually on the inside it gets kind of burnished um if you guys have uh done a lot of your research on leather you'll know that what burnishing is and it'll actually burnish the inside there so you don't get those little fuzzy bits and stuff. So that's another another um, benefit to the wet molding process. So when you guys start this, 
um, take a good look at the gun itself. I'm going to actually pull it out and take a look myself here for a second. Take a good look at the lines beforehand. I'm using my phone to film here, guys, so I can't do what I'm about to tell you to do, but here's a good little, great little tip. Take a picture of it, okay? And then look at your phone while you're molding. And if you do that, it's gonna save you a lot of trouble because you're not gonna have to pull this thing out to look at it. I do a lot of 1911s, so I kinda know the, the lines that I want and how to get them. All right, so got the gun back in there, got the got the dial in where I wanted it, guys. We're gonna go ahead and start our molding process, okay? Um, I'm gonna turn this off, get the press out, and show you guys what I'm talking about with the press. All right, guys, I'm gonna go handheld here for a second to show you the press. Um, basically, what we have is two boxes with some really high density foam, okay? Um, you can kind of see the construction of it here. It's very crude. Um, threw it together in about 30 minutes. One afternoon, uh, I got two hinges on the back. So let me go ahead and set this down. We'll set the holster in. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you set it, guys, as long as you're, you're, you're covered in foam there. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and put this down. And then I grabbed my good, strong Ewalt clamps. Use the big ones. Okay, and then I go ahead and just ratchet clamp this thing down. Okay. And this is gonna get a lot of the molding done for us. Believe it or not, it works pretty well. You can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of trouble by doing this. I'll go handheld here so I can, you guys can see what I'm doing. Basically, just go ahead and ratchet it all down. Check all your sides, make sure you got a tight seam all the way around. and just give it a few extra cranks just for good measure. All right, guys, be back in about five minutes when we take this thing out of the press. All right, guys, so I went ahead and took the holster out of the press. I saved you guys the time by doing that off frame. Um, so if you'll see, it's not much, but the, the detail of the actual pistol itself is definitely a lot more defined now, okay? Um, I'm working on a few things, maybe to try that press, try to get some more detail out of that press. I'll definitely let you guys know if it works out for me. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and get started molding before this thing dries up too much, okay? So what I like to do is go ahead and get my outside lines done first. I'm using a just the, the top of a Sharpie, guys. Um, honestly, they make a lot of tools for this, but the best tool is the one that works, and this one is the one that works for me. Okay, and this, I'm just basically getting the, the rough shape of the outside of the pistol here okay and you'll see that little indention I'm working in right there that's an actual indention on the gun okay so this is makes your holster look super sharp when you get done the sharper your lines the better okay we do the outside first because um, we want to go ahead and get as much of that leather stretched around there and as tight as possible here in the middle before we start doing the detail in the middle and now what I'm doing guys is I'm just doing the top of the weapon and you'll see that sight channel kind of start to take place right there, okay? Um, we're not gonna do any molding on the actual stiffener because the stiffener is ostrich leg, and I don't wanna mess any of that detail up, so we'll do just kind of some light molding with our fingers here, okay? And that's, that's perfectly fine, guys. Um, it's not gonna mess with the function of the holster whatsoever. Um, now I'll go to this little tool. You can pick it up at Tandy for pretty cheap. I think it's called a creaser, fault bone, boner or, or something. Boner. That's funny. Um, so and what I'll do here is I'll just go around the, the outside, make sure I stay on frame here and put in some, a little bit harder line. Okay. And this has got a, a slimmer profile. So it's going to put in a lot, a lot more detailed line. And a lot of guys start by using their fingers. I do that sometimes, guys. It really depends on the gun and it depends on my mood. Um, sometimes I start by kind of pressing stuff in with my fingers. Um, I definitely do that here. I'll press in right here where that little cutout in a 1911 is on the bottom side of the, the pistol. 
press that in there so that way I get that nice and smooth and then I'll kind of cut that in with my my tools here now they make an actual molding tool I have one I only use it for the very very last part okay guys and you see how that's coming together now how it's tying into the the bottom side that I've already done and then you just kind of kind of finesse your lines there and make this stuff really really pop All right, guys. Sorry if I'm not talking here. I do try to concentrate a little bit. And if there's some background noise, the TV's going in the living room. So let me close this door. And y'all let me know. If I talk too much, leave a comment. Let me know. Because I don't want to talk too much. I just do it because I hate silence. If y'all want me to put some music in there, let me know. Okay, so that's pretty much it besides the trigger guard. We'll do the trigger guard last. Um, kind of look down the gun. You'll see the line where the slide meets the frame here. And it pretty much follows the same line. You can kind of lift your leather up down here and take a peek and kind of see where that comes out at. Um, on a 1911, it comes out pretty much right where this indention is. So... What we'll do is we'll kind of try to find it and put it in. All right, guys, and you see how you see how all this is coming together. Now we'll go to our little tool that I was talking about, about the specialized tool. It's a molding spoon. Um, these come in really handy, especially when doing the trigger guard. Um, but I just use it to kind of, kind of really get a hard line in all my detail spots. And you'll see some of that moisture coming out as you press. Um, that is, that is totally fine. There's plenty of moisture still in there. And this is great if you mess up and run your run something across there that you're not supposed to. You can kind of use this to smooth it out. Not going to look 100%, so take your time, be careful. But you can definitely put a band-aid on it. I use the round end of this to kind of really get in that sight groove. All right, guys. See how we're coming there? I don't realize it, but sometimes I block the light. So, kind of, I sometimes kind of take a peek around in my camera and see. And we're doing the trigger guard now, okay? Um, and because I got this sifter on there, you can't do the whole trigger guard, but we can do this part. And this is where you get 90% of your attention right here, okay? This is the part where you are really, really want to push that in and get it as deep as you can without making it look like, you know, you over muscled it. This is, this is one of my favorite parts of the holster making process, guys. Um, I really like doing the molding. The molding and the edges, I try to take as much time on as I can. So sorry if this video gets a little long, guys. Um, I like to take my time. Okay, so we got that all pressed in. Um, we're going to skip the, the creaser there. This go around and go right to our spoon. Okay, and this is where we're going to get that hard line. 
ride around that trigger guard. We can run that all the way up to the, the very edge of the leather, almost, on this particular holster. Boom, guys. Look how awesome that looks. All right. Now, you can fold your wings around now or later. I kind of play with them until I get them right. Um, just make sure when you do, that kind of stretches the rest of this leather here. Make sure um, you can you can see the stiffener is already starting to kind of dry up, guys. Um, this holster is going to look pretty kick-ass when it gets done. All right, so we'll flip over to the back side. And just be careful, don't press super, super hard. That's one thing about having a stiffener there. It kind of kind of helps with that. Um, and, and you know don't don't mess up what you've done on the front side because the front side is really what counts as far as aesthetics go you definitely want to have a good mold on the back side too for purpose wise um but you don't want to mess up that front that's the part that everybody sees that's the that's the wow factor there i'm gonna go ahead and do the sight channel on the back side we'll do around this bottom of this barrel here there's that little indention I was talking about and we'll go up to the trigger guys if you're not running a tensioner screw on a 1911 holster you really want to take your time on this stuff because this is where your retention is going to come from and your retention on a big heavy gun like that has to be spot on if it's not spot on that gun will fall out of that holster um so if you're not running a retention screw and your molding is not the best i recommend putting a strap on there you don't want somebody to get shot on accident using one of your holsters um or yourself if you're making this holster for yourself you don't want to injure yourself and have to explain that to your girlfriend or wife that that new hobby of leather craft that you just picked up got you shot so I'm going down now and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put in this line because I can kind of see it from where I'm at. And I have a feeling if I turn the holster, I won't be able to see it as much anymore. Now, and you guys, if you if it, you're having a hard time seeing some of these where I'm getting these lines from, don't worry. When you go to do it yourself, it's gonna look a lot better than it does on video. Um, get a good light. If you, if you have to press down and kind of feel around with your fingers, that's totally fine. Totally, totally, totally fine. When you've done enough of them, you kind of just know. You can look at it. I'm putting in those hard lines, guys, right here. Putting that hard line up top. And go back and get a good mold there. Okay, now on your back side, you have most of your controls. Um, typically for right-handed guns, most of the controls are on that side because that's the thumb. So you can mold those in if you want. I kind of choose to mold some in depending on how they look. Sometimes they look kind of weird when you mold them in. So um, like on this gun, I just kind of press around it. Just so when my holster, when my gun goes in the holster, it clears and that doesn't catch um, for, reholt, for reholster. I just kind of press around it. I don't, I don't bone that in in detail. Nobody's going to see it. It's not going to give you any retention. Okay, um, I do bone this in though, because it just wouldn't be a 1911 without this little cut here, so. nineteen elevens are some of the most beautiful guns, and they make beautiful holsters. Um, I do a lot of Glock holsters. I hate doing Glock holsters, because there's no, Glock is a very good gun, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a huge Glock fan. I don't shoot Glocks personally because I don't like the way they feel in the hand, um, but that's not taking anything away from the gun. That's just my hands. Um, they are stellar guns. So if you guys are in the market for a gun, maybe watching this video to kind of get your homework done on some holsters before you go buy one, Glocks are excellent guns. Um, I might do a video later on talking about some of my favorite guns and some of my favorite 
carry guns um, and how I carry them, what kind of styles of holsters I carry them in. I live in Florida, so all we have is concealed carry. I do open carry a lot when I'm hunting or fishing. Um, but for the most part, concealed carry is all we have here. And we have really hot weather. So having a good holster makes a huge difference. So you can imagine I do quite a bit of business with people who have subpar holsters and go, man, this holster is hot. You got something that's not going to be as uncomfortable and hot as this thing. I'm just putting that hard line in, guys, where that slide comes down. So you'll see kind of how we molded up the back here. Okay. Got most of that put in. We just got to put the trigger guard in. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that now. And that should... do it for us guys but what I was saying about Glocks earlier is is they're they're really blocky kind of ugly in my eyes now you get some of these aftermarket parts aftermarket slides and stuff that's when they get kind of interesting um, but the shape of them they don't make a fun mold um, like I said, not taking anything away from Glocks, but if you want a pretty holster, you got to start with a pretty gun. And Glocks are not all about being pretty. So the 1911s, you couldn't see this part on the on the front side because we had the stiffener there, but they have this kind of this curve here, and it looks real sharp when you. Get that tool in there. Now I got some kind of deep impressions and a lot of this is coming from the sheer fact that I've kind of let a lot of moisture get out of this just by trying to videotape. So this is where I'm saying the uh, molding tool comes in real handy. Um, another tool that comes in real handy, if you guys have done any tooling, get yourself one of these, it's a pear shader, um, about 10 bucks at Tandy. Um, I do some tooling, but not much. But I do have a pear shader. So pear shaders make excellent molding tools because they're smooth. Anything smooth, guys, you can use a spoon. When I first started, that's what I used. This is just a regular old kitchen spoon. Anything smooth and metal, anything smooth and bone, anything smooth and plastic, it all works. And these pear shaders work really good for doing trigger guards because you can really put a lot of pressure on them and get them pressed in there. Learned that trick from uh, just a guy I ended up talking with when I went up to one of my one of my Tandy visits. So I was picking up some leather. I was talking to a guy in there, and he didn't do holsters, but he did a lot of nice sheaths. And he was talking about what he uses to mold. We were we were kind of going over some of the different things we use, and uh, he told me about the pear shader guys. So talk to other guys in the leather leather work industry. Um, you can learn a lot from people, man. Watch other videos besides mine because you might find something that somebody else does that's a little different that really makes a lot more sense to you or maybe fits a little better with the tools that you have. Now, guys, I'm taking this out, okay? Um, I'm going to take the dowel out, and I'm going to go ahead and put the gun back in there. And that is a perfect fit. No no looseness no rattle it's not falling out now this isn't a full this isn't a real gun so it's not as heavy but guys that's a that's a tight fit i can promise you once a real gun goes in there it's going to click right in now when this gets dry you want to almost hear when you go into that holster you almost want to hear that clicking sound okay it'll click right in and that's when you know you you nailed the retention part of that holster okay so I'll give you guys some close-up shots, some still shots. I'll edit them in, um, and then we'll go to our little discussion afterwards. And I'll let you guys get out of here. I appreciate you guys watching. guys 
Um, well, that pretty much does it for the wet molding process. Um, if you guys want to see anything else um, that I mentioned, please leave me a comment. Um, or just if you have any questions, leave me a comment. Um, if you have any questions about what we did here, anything else. Um, I, I've done a lot of research on leather, not just holsters. I've done a lot of other stuff. If you guys check out my Instagram and Facebook, um, you'll see a lot of different other products on there. Um, I do I do the videos on holsters because that's what I love to do. Um, I love guns. I love holsters. I love everything about them. I love leather. So um, if you guys have any questions on this or anything else, um, I'm going to do a bunch more videos. Um, we got one coming up about burnishing um, and my, my recipe on my edges and how I burnish and wax and, and dye my edges. Um, I have one coming up that I really want to do a build along, like start to finish with a holster. I just got to get the right holster and, and, and get the right get the right angles and, and lighting and all that stuff before I dive into that. Um, I'm also going to do a couple videos here um, soon. I look like I was throwing up gang signs. There. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Um, I'm going to do some videos here soon. <clears throat> Um, and they're going to be called the bragging board. Um, basically, I'm going to be bragging about my holsters. Um, I know that sounds kind of silly, guys, but you got to be proud of your work. Um, and hopefully, what what I'm trying to do with that is show some of my showcase some of my work, some of the stuff that if you if you listen to my tips and stuff like that, some of the stuff that you can accomplish. Um, but also, if you're more of an advanced leather craftsman um, or you're just starting out, maybe it'll give you an idea. Of, of how to go about building a holster. Maybe you're, you're thinking about doing the same gun that I'm, I'm doing this bragging board holster on and uh, you get an idea. Um, and, and really inspiration is my key goal there. It's not bragging, but that's what we're going to call it just because it's a cool name. Um, so we'll do some on that. I have a, a really cool one I'm working on right now. I'm going to brag on it now. It's got a rattlesnake inlay. Um, this one's for my dad. It's for a, it's for a Beretta 92 maybe a 92 FS. I don't know. It's sitting over there. Um, so I'm going to do a bragging board on this. I'll probably actually do a bragging board on this holster that we just, we just worked on when I get finished with it, just cause I got so many videos on it. So, um, I'll link those other videos guys. I'll try to figure out how, how to do that. Um, and I'll also try to put some kind of little subscribe button there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. So if it doesn't show up, my bad, but y'all make sure you go and like, and subscribe. And until then guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.